talk about uh, Sue McIntosh wrote, Hi, Naya, how does one know if you're a star seed or a long-term human? Ultimately, it doesn't matter. Really, it doesn't matter. Now, I can tell the difference very, very easily and very quickly because of the vibration. But as a general rule, as a general rule, a long-term human, a long-term human, um, wow, they, they amaze me. They amaze me. Now, I wouldn't want to hang with a whole bunch of them for a long period of time, but to me, they're absolutely amazing. Uh, these entities, long-term humans, frequently, and I call them long-term humans, but most of the long-term humans were in the game far before Earth was even created. They are experts in the fourth dimension. They're actually experts in every level of the game, the true long-term humans. And uh, my ex number two, Stephanie's daughter, uh, Stephanie's dad, he was actually, he is actually friends with the creator. So he came into this game after duality split. There were a couple of splits, but then he was in playing the game. So he's been here a very longer than you can even imagine time-wise. Um, so he is an absolute true expert, and I have watched him. He is, I have known him since I was 23 years old, and I'm 69 now. And I have watched him for decades, literally decades, and been totally amazed. Uh, this guy, and I'll tell you a story. We were married at the time. Uh, this was far before our divorce. And even when we split up, we don't, we seem to come back in each other's lives all the time. Now, I know why that is. Um, and I'll tell the story someday. But... Uh, it, it's an interesting story, but at this point now it's just kind of this this understanding between the two of us. We're older now. And he's ten years older than I am, so he's really mellowed. I've really mellowed, but I've watched him, and literally, this is the story I wanted to tell you. And this is classic uh, long-term human. Uh, they can do this. And we were driving down the road and this was in a kind of a residential district but pretty close to a commercial street but it was a residential area there were residential houses there and he actually said to me he said this he goes you know i really want to go buy this thing whatever it was that he wanted i don't remember what it was but it cost about over a thousand dollars this is oh back when i was oh 25 27 so it was years ago so uh, 1500 bucks was a lot of money back then. And it still is to me now. But nonetheless, he said, oh, I want to go buy that. And he didn't have the cash in his hand um, at the time. And I guess he didn't want to touch the money that we had. So he, we were driving along, and there was a, was a house in the corner. And in front of it was a sign for a dentist office. And he slammed on the brakes and pulled in. And I went, what are you doing? He goes, hold on, I'll be right back. And he walked in there. Now, this dentist's name was clearly um, Irish. You could just tell it was an Irish name. So he walked in there, and about 30 minutes, I swear to God, 30 minutes later, he came walking out, and he handed me a check for $1,500. And I just looked at him in just amazement. And I said, well, what happened? What would you do? And he said I walked in and told him that I was an artist and asked him if they had a logo. He didn't have a logo. So I grabbed a piece of paper, jotted out a little Irish leprechaun-y guy, handed it to him, and he gave me, and he, I charged him $1,500 to make the logo. And I went, I, I just was stunned, absolutely stunned. And that's long-term human. They know how to create in this game. They, they're very good at it. Another example is he was a salesman. And it was a salesman, he contracted for ATM machines way, way, way back when they weren't everywhere. And I went into a couple of business meetings with him. And I just sat there and he said I was his assistant, blah, blah, blah. And he literally would walk in the office and look around the office. And let's say the guy had a painting on the wall of hunting or... Um, you know, a Texas flag on the wall, whatever. He would pick out what was in that office 
And that meant that that person was interested in it. And we'd sit down and he'd start talking about whatever the person's interest was. And that would lead to a very back and forth conversation. It would get the person talking about what their interest was. And they'd get very excited and animated and he'd get animated. And somewhere about 30 minutes into the conversation, Steve would take the contract and just slide it over to them. Now, not one conversation about what he was selling. Not one bit of conversation about what was in the contract. And every time, the person would continue to talk back and forth to him about whatever the interests were, and they'd pick up their pen and sign the contract and push it back to him. That's long-term human. Now, the same ex-husband also was homeless for about five years solid. What he did, because he is an artist, is he is, even though he was homeless, nobody would have ever known it because he grabbed a, a uh, notebook, you know, a, a drawing pad and his pencils and he would go around and he would sit and he would draw so that everybody assumed, well, he's just an artist doing his thing. Never, never once did they think he was homeless and that's how he survived and he has very good memories of being homeless. A long-term human loves, and I cannot tell you this enough, love, 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 loves the contrast. They love getting into difficult situations, but what they will do almost always is they will be able to move through that difficult situation, go to the other side and look back and stand tall and go, I did it. And I've given you guys this this analogy before. It's like somebody who climbs up Mount Everest. They know it's going to be difficult, painful. They might even die. But they do it anyway because they want to get it done. So they can say, I did that. I did that. That's how long-term humans are. They have helped the creator create the most intense, difficult game so that they can experience. Then at the end of the day, they will come out and they will say, I did that. I was involved in that. They like that sort of thing. Star seeds don't generally like this much contrast. We don't generally like um, what is what is understood of as the negativity here. The things that go against our our core nature that we it, it it is normal for a star seed to want to work with a group to have give and take to not have judgment about it to not be fighting about everything to uh, care for one another as we would ourselves that's all oneness stuff that has not been covered up or forgotten because we have not been here enough lifetimes to do so However, a long-term human has forgot those things. So they're very independent and they're very God-like. People would call them narcissists. They would call them, oh, uh, self-centered. But a true long-term human will play out like it doesn't matter what the rest of the world's doing. This is my life and I control it, which is the truth. It's just the difference is they've forgotten they're a part of everything they're playing with. But they will not be thrown. They can, they can create. They're very, very good at creating at this density level, whereas a star seed is not. We're not very good at, at uh, the time lapse. We're not very good at, at the contrast and the density, and the energy level, energy at this level. It, it's not our norm. Okay. All right. So, did that answer the question? Okay, so I think there's plenty of stuff out there that you can look at online that has all kinds of starseed, this starseed, that. Now, when I say starseed, I don't know that that's the same as other people saying starseed. Um, I saw the word two years ago, liked it, and used it. Uh, they may be using starseed because they're talking about 4D starseeded. And they're going to be talking about how well, you're star-seeded, you're from the Pleiadian people, or whatever long list they've got of, of alien names. Um, I have a hard time with those names, because in 4D, I recognize all aliens by their vibration. There's a few of them that they've got the name right enough that I can find it, but for the most part, there's so many aliens out there. I mean, it's just 
way more than what they talk about. I, I'm not sure why they pick the ones they do, the handful that they talk about, but there's there's just so many. There's uh, billions upon billions of different kinds of aliens. So, uh, yeah, there'd be more than anybody has names for here. But I think what they say is they maybe Starseed came originally from people uh, who, you know, maybe a Pleiadian came and they were a part of when you were born. Maybe that's what they think. Um, I don't agree with that. Starseeded to me simply means an entity that is new to the game, the dualistic game, the whole game, and they're new to it on this planet. So they're very, they came down to be very hyper vibrational on a low vibrational planet to kind of help um, Gaia in areas so that she could raise the vibration to go to 5D. It's that simple. Because you landed on this planet higher vibratorily, that doesn't mean you were better than anybody at all. This is simply semantics. And I, I hate to talk to humans whenever I say high and low because they immediately think higher is better, lower is less. No, it's just different. That's all. It's just different. It's just that you came to help Gaia. That's it. And you were higher vibration than what Gaia was, and that makes every everybody who stands on a on a planet that's a little bit off vibrationally, you're a bit uncomfortable. Uh, physically, you probably have always had physical problems. I don't know of any star seed that hasn't had some kind of physical, emotional problems. That's simply because you've you've been on a planet when it's been lower vibration. Now that has changed. Gaia is way higher now. As a matter of fact, she's kind of zoomed past you now. So, unfortunately, if you don't raise your vibration, you're going to continue to have those physical, emotional, mental um, issues. So, now's the time to raise with her. Now's your chance. But the older you are, the more used to you are of, of being where you, protecting yourself where you were. So, that's the trick, is to letting go of that to raise your vibration. And you will feel better. And that is how you get to 5D. All right. Okay, hopefully that answered that question. Love you guys so much. Huge hugs. Talk to you later. Bye now.